Hello. If you have joined us for the very first time just this week, welcome to the Canting Club. This week we have an Albariño from Spain. It's from Galicia, the northwestern corner of Spain, between the north border of Portugal and the Bay of Biscay. This comes from the region called Rias Baixas, which is right on the Atlantic coast. Albariño from here has a reputation as the best white of Spain. So let's see if this can live up to that reputation. It's a lovely greenish gold colour. This will be due partly to Albariño's thick skins, where the colour is concentrated in the skin, and also due to the skin contact it will have had before fermentation to extract all the aroma compounds from those skins. Albariño is famed for its fragrance. Wow, and what a fragrance! This has a pronounced and exotic nose of elderflowers, almond paste, and even candied pineapple. Terrific. Mm. Big flavours on the palate too. So much so that they make this dry wine taste almost off dry, and that's something Albarino is noted for. It's perhaps no more than medium bodied, but that counts as positively heavyweight for this grape. And there are rich mouth-filling flavours of pink grapefruit and white peach. And these lead on to a long, tingling finish. And that tingling is the acidity characteristic of this grape, making itself felt. It was rather swamped by the fruit at the beginning. Also on that finish are hints of bitter almonds, again a grape characteristic. And these are appetising and food friendly. This is a, an exotically ripe and particularly full flavoured example of the grape. Um, I mean, it may not be more, not be more than medium body, but that's positively heavyweight for Albariño. It's the trademark grape of this region, the Rias Baixas, occupying more than 90% of the vineyards. That's only partly to do with its newfound fashionability in recent decades, but also because it's quite difficult to successfully grow other varieties in this climate. The Rias Baixas look more like the west coast of Ireland than like the rest of Spain. They're verdant and forested, rising out of craggy inlets from the coastline. It rains a lot here, and when it's not raining, the vineyards are often shrouded in mist. This is bad news for vines and very good news for vine diseases like rot and mildew. To combat that, the vines here are trained up high on pergolas, which keeps them away from the damp ground and up in the, in the drying sea breezes. Even that wouldn't be enough if it weren't for the characteristics of this grape. It's got tiny berries with thick skins, effective raincoats, which form into loose clusters with plenty of room for the air to circulate, making it very rot resistant. It also ripens early and easily, with a tendency to high sugar levels, which counteracts the uh, cool, climate, cool and wet climate tendency for the grapes to plump up with water and be dilute and not ripen very easily. So that Albarino from here normally comes in around 12% alcohol, which makes the grape so perfectly adapted to its environment. This one is unusually strong at 12.5%, which was down to that hot summer of 2012, which produced a very small crop, which ran out almost as soon as we bought our consignment. We only have a handful of bottles left after filling your pouches. So if you order this, you'll more likely get the 2014. Now I've drunk that too, and it's lovely. It's very much in the same mould as this, perhaps not quite so exotically rich, but with crisper acidity and more of the salty seaside tang that this wine is noted for. You wouldn't be missing out. Cheers.